Greetings, people. It's your boy, the righteous messenger, the rhythm rider. You see. And today I want to debunk the ontological argument. Ontological argument, people. Ontological arguments are arguments that argue for the existence of God. You know, true deductive reasoning, meaning it's purely intellectual activity, it's philosophy. And among for whom we say deductive reasoning. It means that the premises or the statements that we make to support the argument are self-evident. Self-evident positions are positions that are true. They are undeniably true. They are inescapably true. They are true in the sense that you cannot deny these statements if they are made like if i say humans need air to live everybody knows this is true can you deny that human beings do not need air to live everybody knows that this is true so this is a self-evident position or statement that i have made and moving forward ontological arguments use self-evident positions or statements to argue for the existence of God. So, if the statement in the argument is not true or is not self-evident, to me, we cannot say that the argument is sound or the argument is valid. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And then, ontological arguments basically uses the properties of God to argue for the existence of God so generally a lot of people a lot of religions or a lot of believers say God is omnipotent God is omniscient God is all knowing God is all loving God is perfect to the believer God is perfection yeah I hope I'm right in saying this because when I talk to religious people or believers, this is the impression I get that God can't make a mistake. God is perfect. God is timeless. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful. I'm out for all people. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Even if you have never heard of ontological argument please look for it you can google it it's there don't even believe me what i'm saying try and look for it yourself read argument again and again and see what it means because i have read the arguments and i'm going to read them to you but you see the way the argument is made made one of my questions is why does the existence of God need an argument? If the existence of God is true, there won't be no arguments. And when you go and you see the ontological argument, hey, I'm out for you read and read and read and read and read and read. And, read. and if you are not careful, you won't understand what you're saying. To me, I think it's confusing, but I've been able to understand it and I'm going to debunk it in this video. Yeah, so people, ontological argument for the existence of God was first made by Saint Anselm. I hope I'm pronouncing or mentioning the name well. Anselm. Saint Anselm. And he was a French philosopher. A... 11th century French philosopher. He was also the Archbishop of Canterbury. I'm on for, do you understand what that means? The Archbishop of Canterbury. Please look it up. That was between 1093 to 1109. 
he died in 1109 so until he died he was the archbishop of canterbury yes he lived between 1033 and 1109 so people the ontological argument basically rests on five premises and i am going to state or read the premises to you and then debunk them as we go along the first premise says that it is possible to conceive of a being than which nothing greater can be conceived namely god did you get that it is possible to conceive of a being than which nothing greater can be conceived namely god so people what is the meaning of conceive yes people conceive means a few things but in this context i am sure conceive means to imagine or to form form a concept of something or an idea in the mind yeah conceive so he is saying that you can conceive of a being than which nothing is greater so you can think about something which is the greatest thing nothing is greater than this thing which is possible yes i can think of something which is the greatest but does this does it mean that this thing is real because from the beginning i have told you that deductive reasoning or arguments should have self-evident statements to support it to make the argument valid i can think of something which is the greatest but does it does it mean that this thing exists no so already to me the argument has fallen apart but let's continue and the second premise says that it is possible to conceive of a being that must exist that is a necessary being yeah it is possible to conceive of a being that must that must exist yeah which is a necessary being so here for me the must in this statement he's saying that that must exist but this being that we can conceive of that is the greatest or the best does it exist you see this is the argument he says this being must exist but to me the being which is the greatest which is talking about no, does not exist it's not self-evident and he says that this being is a necessary being what is a necessary being i'm on for i beg can someone show me please leave comments a necessary being what is a necessary being first of all necessary is something which is so important that you cannot do without it like air air that we breathe or oxygen air or oxygen that we, which we humans bring is necessary without air or this oxygen human existence is impossible so to me this air is necessary but is air a being you can say that because a being is something that exists air exists is understandable you can't argue that air does not exist we need air to live most living things or let's just keep it at the human level human beings need air to exist you can't argue about that but this necessary being which we are saying is god or which the argument is saying is god does it exist i want for because i don't believe he exists but i'm still living some people believe he exists they're living as well you see but when you talk the believers will say oh he's a forgiving god he gives you time to to repent and all this nonsense I'm for it doesn't make sense 
if this being is a, a necessary being, it should be self-evident. It should be undeniable. Some people shouldn't say he exists. Some people shouldn't say he doesn't exist. Just like the example that I'm making, air. There's nobody in this world that will say that air does not exist. Because you need, you know you need air to live, to continue living. Man, for let's go to the third premise. The premise says it is possible to conceive of a being that may not exist. That is a contingent being. Which is true as well. It is possible to think that or to 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 imagine that me righteous means i don't live i don't exist because my existence doesn't really change anything does it so it's saying contingent being yeah that word contingent means it's saying that something that exists and then at the same time it's saying that something that could not have existed yeah so it's something that exists but it's something that could not have existed you see that like me righteous I, I exist but if my mother and my father didn't meet i wouldn't have existed i'm sure that's what he's saying that this thing is contingent because it depends on something before that thing exists so if what it depends on is non-existent then that thing will not exist this is the way i understand it i'm for you see how confusing it is for someone trying to prove the existence of god yeah i don't think it should be this complex for someone to to believe in the existence of god if this god exists this is my opinion yeah and um let's go on to the fourth premise the fourth premise says a necessary being is greater than a conting a contingent being so here this saint anselm who first put up this argument for the existence of god you can say he's comparing a necessary being to a contingent being amount for which in my eyes he's belittling god if god exists how can you compare a necessary being to a contingent being it's like me comparing air or oxygen to apples whether you eat apple or not you can exist you can keep on living but if you you are you are deprived of air you will die you will become non-existent you see this is the argument and we say that how can you compare these two things ah something which is greatest and perfect you are comparing to something which is imperfect like a human being you can't compare god to a human being in my eyes if this god exists you are belittling God. And then let's go to the fifth premise. The fifth premise says, Since God is a being than which nothing greater can be conceived, and a necessary being is greater than a contingent being, God is a necessary being. You see, all these things I'm out for. Uh, look at it. It's like trying to define God into existence. Mm, which is easier defining this God into existence or this God finding a medium of making all living beings aware that he exists which is a better form of evidence we need undeniable evidence evidence which is understandable evidence or, or knowledge which it's inescapable for the existence of God and then you are giving us this argument <laughs> oh Charlie I'm for it will be easy oh. man for 
these are the five premises here yeah? and then in the end he say therefore god exists that's the conclusion but to me i'm not convinced that this argument prove the existence of god the premises i can accept the premises but you see the premises are not self-evident in reality yeah it's it's okay you can conceive imagine or think about the premises as as an idea or a concept but in reality to me they don't add up yeah so if you don't believe in god and i come and deliver this argument to you is it going to change your mind people please leave comments secondly i think these arguments are confusing how many people will come across this argument in their entire life me i'm coming i've come across this argument because i'm i'm studying and I, i'm i'm looking at the god question critically you see and these philosophical arguments or ideas that have been put forward from time i'm looking at them looking at how they have been debunked looking at the mistakes in the arguments looking at the fallacies in the arguments looking if this argument or the statements in the argument are self-evident or not and the statements in here even though can be conceived are not self-evident they do not tally or make up in reality so i'm out for looking at it to me god is not self-evident no god is not self-evident and in my experience with what i've come across through my life no i don't think god is evident because even recently they say a boy in morocco fell in a well and in the end the boy died where is god or where was god where was God to save this little boy who has fallen into a well? Or is God leaving the boy to die so that we can see how great he is? When you say believers or religious people will say, Oh, God does what he wants. It doesn't make sense. It's better for God to, to save this boy so that we can see that, okay, maybe this god exists and is great and is perfect and these things but he's not even if he exists which i refuse i refuse he doesn't exist uh, where is the evidence uh, even this contingent being that the argument is saying that a necessary being is greater than a contingent being if in reality there is a necessary being then this necessary being, being will obviously be greater than a contingent being but where is the necessary being i can see the contingent being which is self-evident to me so is it saying that even this contingent being is greater than the necessary being according to this argument because necessary being is not self-evident to me contingent being is self-evident to me i see human beings walking up and down where is God? Say it's in the sky. Some people say God is energy. Energy. Hey, I'm man for. Anyway, is your boy the righteous messenger, the rhythm rider as well? Yes. And you know, I just can't show you the ontological argument and I've tried to debunk it. If there's something that I didn't address or talk about properly, please, you can leave comments and I'll get back to you. Peace. Bye-bye.